Room 2015, directed by Lenny Abrahamson, was created based on the best-selling novel written by Emma Donahue. The story is a drama and a thriller and shows what life was like in captivity and their road to freedom. The main characters, Ma or better known as Joy Newsom, portrayed by Brie Larson, and Jack, portrayed by Jacob Tremblay, share and portray a very strong mother and son bond in the movie. The movie begins with Jack and Joy Newsom going through their day in the room that they have been held captive for seven years. Bree's character tries her best to shield her son Jack from the unknown that lies beneath the world as he had never experienced life out of the room as he was born in there. As time passed, she felt like it was time for him to understand what lies beyond the room, her story of how she ended up in the room, and their plans of escape. This led to an argument between mother and son. You were too small to understand, so I had to make up a story because you're five now. You're five and you're old enough to understand what the world is. You have to understand. You have to understand. We can't keep living like this. You need to help me. The plan involved Jack to remember and do the following. Truck, wiggle out. Jump when the truck slows down. Run, somebody. You are right. In the end, both mother and son managed to escape and the kidnapper was then caught. Joy was reunited with her family and both Joy and Jack then tried to adapt back to life. As time passed, both of them visited the room once more as this time it was per Jack's request. And in the end scene, you feel a sense of confusion in Jack's character as he felt that the room has shrunk. And with that, it was how the movie Room concluded. Settings, props, costume and makeup, and lighting is essentially the four general areas of mise-en-scene. In the beginning of the film, it starts out with the shots in the room where Jack and Ma were held captive. The designer of the set, Ethan Tobin, took time in studying environments of small living and how they could function in such places. More so than any film I've ever worked on, the inspiration for the design process on this came from research. I found myself pulling obvious references like the Fitzel dungeon, J.C. Dugard's residence, um, Ariel Castro's home, as well as the incredibly small apartments in Hong Kong and how people manage to live in tiny spaces. So it became sort of a meditation on what to do in a tiny space and how people live with limited resources. Aside from the scene in the room, there are four more different settings. There were shots taken in the back of a truck and its surroundings, inside the police car, the hospital, and finally, the home in which Joy Newman grew up in. These shots are crucial in making sure there is a clear flow in the story. Next are the props. The scenes shot in the room introduce many props from their cutlery, bowls, plates, chairs, and many more shows how badly their living situation is and how the abductor treated them. A scene that caught my attention was the monologue of Jack talking about the egg snake and his spoon. Egg snakes are our longest friend and fanciest. Melted his spoon's the best to eat with because he's an blobby. The way in which the characters dress and their makeup also help tell the story. For example, the use of either baggy or old clothes in the scenes in the room shows that the characters kept wearing the same things over and over again and had no access to other clothes. In certain scenes in the room, you could see that Ma's clothes are a little oversized and too baggy, and that Jack would not wear any pants but just his undergarments. The way in which these characters were shown in the scenes in the room, you could see that they were barefaced and had no makeup and their appearance was unkept. In later scenes, you could slowly see the evolution of the way in which they dress and their appearances change. An example of this is the interview. Joy is shown in a very casual and cleaned up look with a black dress and a fully made up face. The lighting used in the movie varies in every scene, and there were also many different techniques of lighting. The scenes shot in the room and in the truck use natural lighting. For scenes in the room, the main source of lighting was the skylight, and you can see it very well in the shots of Jack and the sun rays hitting the wall. The truck scenes are also natural lighting. As a viewer, I could picture the time of day and how it felt. The night scenes in the police car are shot real time. 
the use of low light and natural lighting are also seen. Shots within the car from Jack's perspective, you could see that it is shot inside the car and there were natural light as you could see the lights change every time they drove past a street lamp. The overall performance of this movie was very good. Both Brie Larson and Jacob Tremblay both received awards for their work. They also portrayed the story very well and as a viewer, I could feel how the characters felt and the way in which their emotions flowed. The whole crew which worked on the room brought the book to life. The interesting thing was the book was just pure fiction and to see it brought to life leaves me absolutely speechless. Overall, this movie is an 8 out of 10. The storyline was very well written and the scenes were very well grouped together and shot. But to me, I just felt that the story was a little too long.